All right, all right. Greetings and peace, everyone. My name is Neo, and I'm here to share some info with the people. All right, welcome to the Committed Relationships and Spiritual Activity Show. I truly appreciate you listening to the show. And if you have not checked out any of my previous episodes, please go ahead and do so because I have a lot of information that I provide for people regarding relationships and spiritual activity, spirituality in general and spirituality versus religion, because they are two different things. And I I will just at my mother's house this past weekend or so and it it solidified to me even more that that there is a big difference between spirituality and religion and there is religious people who consider them religion and spirituality the same thing but my mother she said um we was watching tv or she was watching tv and she said anything that's about she said to my nieces that anything about spirituality, she doesn't want to watch on TV. She was like, anything that's about that spiritual stuff, I don't want to watch it. That spiritual stuff. And that made me stop and think like, now li- listen to this. So these people, they claim to be spiritual people, but yet they, they and my mother is a Jehovah's Witness. She still is a Jehovah's Witness out of seeing so many people that she studied the Bible with as far as she having her Bible studies with her own, um, what do you call them? Bible students, I think, yeah, with Bible students. And all everybody that she studied with, they all dropped out and left the, <laughs> left the religion <laughs> in one form or another. She, that still didn't get to her head, her thick ass head, to realize like, hey, wait a minute. Everybody that I study with, as far as a Bible student, that are my Bible students, they all drop out and leave the religion. So maybe I should just sit here and analyze this fucking religion and real and, and think about, is it really for me? <laughs> but that's how a lot of people are when they get into religions, especially when they get into them early. Very few people actually wake up from these religions and and start to analyze these religions and really real think about if the religion is for them in general. But and then a lot of people, they stay in religions because they are still on that survival level and they're too scared to get out on their own. So I can understand that, too, because it took me a while uh, back in the day to really muster up the, the psychological strength to just leave. And especially after I analyzed like what was going on and if it was for me or not. So I left left that Jehovah's Witness religion when I was the age of 19. Yep, around that that age, 19, 20, something like that. But anyways, let me go ahead and explain my background really quick for the the newbies that are new to my overall YouTube channel and also my podcast show. Okay, my name is Neo, and you say my last name you can say it in a, in a lot of ways, but I just say it in the American way, Ascuetu, or you can say Ascu Huetu, Ascuetu, and it's kind of like when you say white, or you can just say Ascuetu, Ascuetu. It means he who keeps watch. And if you have not checked out any of my YouTube videos before i mean if you have you can see that i really am one of the ones that that keeps watch on this this society here in america in particular but also world societies and i do a lot of people watching and i analyze a lot of life in general but especially relationships and uh, years and years ago, maybe in the mid 2000s or, or so, mid to late 2000s, I went through a relationship breakup with a a woman that I was in a relationship with, 
who I was really interested in. And that relationship breakup made me realize that I had a lot to learn about myself in relationships. And during that time, like right after that moment where I sat down after she told me that I had, she was like, you have a lot of potential, but you're just not there. She said something like that. You're just not ready. And it's best that we just be friends. She said something like that. And at that moment, it didn't hurt me. But it was just a little bit weird because I usually like before that I would like get hurt and I would get mad and, and try to get the woman to, to, to stay with me because I would have that separation anxiety. And this was before I did my personal development work and where, when I was more psychological, psychologically fragile, a.k.a. a pussy. Uh, <laughs> um, but then it's just something just wouldn't allow me like after that breakup right there within that moment something just wouldn't allow me to 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 feel devastated it was like i kind of wanted to feel disappointed but i didn't it was like something that was preventing me from from doing it and i think it was like a spiritual moment was like okay no look now now is the time to start focusing on your personal development work so get it done so i sat down and I said, you know what, what is the best thing to do now? And then I, I set up myself all out. Well, you know what, I'm just going to go find me another woman. And then that's when I got the spiritual transmission that came through and said to my, said to me and asked me, what makes you feel that you are ready for another relationship? And I was like, oh, shit, that is true. I don't know. I do have to learn about relationships because there's nobody that taught me about relationships at all. So why the fuck do I feel like I need to go with another woman? I was like, oh man, so I need to study this. And that's exactly what I did when I'm my years of studying, 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 and doing a lot of self-reflection and self-analysis. That's some real deal stuff. And that's where people fail is they don't do self-reflection and self-analysis because they have their illusionary ego in their way blocking them from doing it because the ego knows that the moment that the person starts analyzing themselves the less control is going to have over the individual and like I said in my previous videos the ego hijacks a person's higher consciousness prevents the higher consciousness from being able to come through which is their higher spiritual self and give them information and the ego is only attached to the physical body it's not a spiritual entity and it's not your true self so enough of that um and i've doing i've been doing a lot of analysis for years of relationships spirituality and life itself so this information that I'm speaking about here regarding single mothers is a result of that and also a result of my own experience being raised by a single mother. So let's move on. So single mothers, it is much more pre prevalent. They are much more prevalent than ever before. And this is so, so true. And from my experience, so this is my, my situation. My parents, they divorced when I was the age of four and they had four children and I was the age of four when they divorced. Ooh, oh, shoot. So if they divorced. Oh, I just had another realization. So. <laughs> oh, shoot. OK, um, one of my siblings were a oops baby and that's what i'll say and an oops baby is one that really wasn't supposed to be here and i'm not gonna go into <laughs> to details but people know what an oops baby is you know you know how that is so me just now saying that my parents divorced at age when i was age four that oh shit <laughs> Oh, uh, man. So I wonder how people feel when they realize that they was a oops baby. <laughs> if there's anybody out there 
who knows what an oops baby is and who was a direct result of a being an oops baby I want you to either write a comment in the comment section or send me an email at committed relationships at gmail.com which will be in the description you can just copy and paste that and tell me what was your first feelings on when you found out <laughs> that you was a oops baby <laughs> that just sounds so funny okay so they divorced early on in my early years so i didn't i didn't really get the chance to see a mar them as a married couple together if I, and yeah to really really see it for myself because i think they was like all over the place with each other so i didn't really have that experience of seeing them two together often and whenever i did see them two together there was they were separated psychologically and emotionally and I can definitely tell the difference between them and other married couples. Well, couples in general. So throughout my time, the majority of my life, I saw them in separation and going through little hissy fits. Because that's what my mother is. She is so immature. You could just say one little thing that she didn't like that messed up her ego. And then she'll go into her little hissy fit. <laughs> her little hissy fit just like uh this past weekend uh she asked me to do something for her which i've been doing so many things for her throughout my life in general and especially being the least that gave her the least trouble throughout her life and my life together and i i, I charged her i, I charged her. i said all right i do this for such and such amount you know it was ten dollars and which she was going to give me ten dollars anyways so I was gonna take that ten dollars and just do, just do it for her favor, which was all it was—just a mundane, dumbass thing. Just like I said, dealing with her is mundane stuff. It was just to pick up some food, and then I charged her just like she charges us to use her one of her vehicles, which she got two vehicles. And then boy, she done went on a fucking hissy fit. She got mad. <laughs> Walked back in her room, and then later, later on, she got the nerve to to mumble under her uh under her voice, under her voice. No, no good. <laughs> so I I was laughing. I was laughing because I already knew what the deal was. Because my mother, she didn't have a strong, mature father figure in her life, and at the same time not having a positive experience with my father and at the same time me i look like my father and there's a lot of women who are in that same situation and what they'll do is when they go when they have a, a male a son they will put all of their frustration throughout a variety of times throughout their life on their son just because of their negative beliefs in their so-called negative experiences that they have had with men in their life and due to them lacking to do personal development work which includes self-reflection self-analysis and personal and self self-development they leave those negative beliefs within inside their minds which is highly destructive for themselves and keeps them from further evolution so they just walk around being miserable at men and they, and some of them, they end up being single for the rest of their lives be, due to them sabotaging their relationships. And that sabotaging comes from their negative beliefs about men and also relationships, but in particular men. And that's how it is with, with my mother. So whatever she says and does to me, it it doesn't affect me at all because I'm at a very, very strong psychological strength level and at me knowing what's going on with my mother psychologically, I just really treat her pretty much like a child and that's really much how she is. She's psychologically a grown up child and that's how it is with a lot of people in general and including my family, grown up children psychological children yes they might have a car they might have a home they might have children 
their own children, but they're still psychological children. Then that's how it is with my parents, both of them. And when I had my um, meeting with my father on my birthday, because I just wanted to get some kind of closure and just speak with him. When at the age of when I was 20, when I turned 27, um, that night where he, he dropped me off from my from the dinner that we had, which I had to be the one that called had to call him and just to get together and, and have a meeting and, and to just talk. That's when I realized like he still is a little boy. He still is a grown up child and he has not evolved and his like his vitality from the last time that I saw him when I was in my teenage years. His vitality dropped tremendously, and that's because all of the stress that he has allowed himself to be in. But anyways, back to the single mother stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> I guess that's information that I needed to get across. The spirit was guiding me to that. Um, so with, with single mother, so now that you guys know that I was brought up in a single mother home. So back to what i was explaining about how this this get this get started so a lot of um females they don't grow up in a mature adult environment where that maturity can be passed on to them and there's a lot of females that have parental deficiencies what I call, and this is this is my own terminology, after doing my own analysis, a parental deficiency is when a person lacks parental strong parental guidance that provides them the the maturity level to be able to think on them their own and to be solid and confident within themselves. And whenever they, they they lack one or more parent, one or either of their parents that have a strong maturity level, that parental deficiency causes the, the, the individual to seek out that gender of the parents that they lack in their life. And even if they did have that parent in their life, what matters most is the psychological refinement level of the parent and the maturity level of the parent. And me doing my own analysis of this for many, many years and observation, I really realized that a person can have both parents in their life throughout their, their whole childhood. But if, if neither of the parents are on a high adequate level, maturity level, then that's little to nothing matters of having both parents in their life because they can have both parents in their life but both of the parents are complete assholes literally and and still psychological psychological children and i know there's some family members in my life that i've analyzed who who had both parents in their life and then the child is still a psychological child, even in their late 20s, 30s, 40s, yeah, 30s and 40s, they're still children because they didn't have that psychological mature guidance from their parents. So now throughout the female's life, they're seeking a, a male, a strong male figure in their life because they didn't get that from their father. And they want they, they want that missing void. They want that void. And some of them, they'll get it from any male. Well, they'll open up to any male that gives them attention. Whether it be in high school, it be in their, in their neighborhood, it could be at their workplace. It can be anywhere. And I remember analyzing my sister's like when I did my analysis on my sisters and how they was raised and with no strong father figure in their life, they went looking for a male early, like in their teenage years. And that's why they left my mother's house at 16. My, my oldest 
sister, she left at 16. And then my second older sister, she left right behind her, like, I think at 15. And they were they were running off looking <laughs> looking for boys, which in that in actuality they had that father deficiency, aka father daddy issues, daddy issues that they never resolved. And my mother, she was psychologically inequipped to to resolve the situation because she wasn't solution oriented and she did she wasn't strong within herself so she didn't know what the fuck she was doing so she's not to blame which as soon as you have children it is your responsibility to find a way to be solution oriented in general and to be the mature adult and start evolving yourself so that is your responsibility in actuality yeah it is her fault. <laughs> so it's like if she didn't want that responsibility, then she, my mother didn't have to, she shouldn't have had children, especially had more than one. And that comes from my analysis too. That made me realize that parents who have one child, they need to get that one, that their first project completed, successfully completed. And if that one isn't, wasn't successful, then stop having any more children don't have any more children if you did not if you didn't have a high success level with the first one and you don't have a strong relationship with the first one don't have any more until you figure out what went wrong with the first one and figure out what you need to do within yourself to evolve yourself and mature start that personal development journey right now before you have any more children and that's one thing that that made me cr scratch my head when i look at a lot of these these parents that have more than one child when they don't even have a strong relationship with the first one and that's with my parents also with my parents so i see the difference and there's a lot of parents that are like that in in that situation so so that's why i recorded that personal development journey video if you have not seen that go check that out and that's why i tell people start your personal development journey right now so w w what they do is they go around looking for a male just to to fill that void and they think that receiving that affection from a, that affection from a male that that is the true expression of love that um, holding hands, kissing, and, and sex, they think that that's love, but because they have not experienced, like women in general, females in general, because they have not experienced true love from their father, they think that what they see on TV with, with other women holding hands, kissing, and having sex with a male, that that is the end-all, be-all of love. And that is what I call the romance of fi fireworks of romance. And I speak about that in my lecture, my relationship lecture on my my website of uh, the fireworks of romance. After a while, that fireworks of romance fades out that infatuation. And then the male in particular, because men are not built to be in relationships and under and to understand and to be able to thrive in that emotional and psychological arena of relationships and me after doing my own analysis of this and of myself also i realized that and that a man has to psychologically equip himself like train himself to be able to thrive in those arenas because it's not in our nature. And that's why a lot of men have a lot of difficulty being in relationships with women. Well, relationships in general, but in particular, committed relationships with women. Because it's just not in our nature to do a lot of things that are required psychologically and emotionally regarding relationships. So you, as a man, you got to develop yourself. To, to be that way if you want to be successful within rela committed relationships with, with women in particular. Um, but it's, it's just relationships in general. But this it's an extra step that you have to take. One or more extra steps that you have to take regarding relationships with women, committed relationships with women. So with them running around with 
with the the females running around with women. Well, I mean, not with women, but running around looking for a male figure in their life, they end up having a baby with that one male that they find that that gives them some sort of satisfaction, regardless if it's if it's mature guidance, mature satisfaction from the male or not, because the the female did not really do go through any kind of personal development process from their parents or even themselves, they think that this is just true love that's coming from the male. When all it is is just an infatuation and then the male just wants, he just wants that pussy. And especially within the teenage years and early 20s, most males, including me when I was in my early 20s, most males, they really just want the pussy. We go through that that hormonal change, which women, females do too, but within the teenage years, all the way up to 25, and sometimes for men, it's, it's, it's still later. It goes on and on and on. They just want the pussy. And me going through my own process of this and analyzing myself, I realized that that's how really it is. It really is. And then me and, and also analyzing this, I really realize and think that it's better for a man who realized within himself that he just wants the pussy and he does not want to be in a relationship. Then he needs to avoid putting on the illusion to any female that he wants a, re a committed relationship just to get the pussy. Don't do that. You have to tell women from the start that you're not looking for a relationship and right now you're just looking to just chill and just fuck you if you are open like that i'm telling you you will be surprised at how many females will be like okay well i'm looking for that too <laughs> this is speaking from experience that's why you got to just be up front just tell them and don't act like you want to be in a relationship with a woman when you know you just want the pussy because it's it's not a good thing and a lot of women they fall victim to those type of men and then they end up having children and then the, the male ends up not coming through as a uh, a man should with fa the father responsibilities and then the mother ends up being a single mother and, and regardless of how it happens with a, a woman they end up being a single mother in one way or another and this largely comes from the male not seeing any strong male figure in his life also and on top of that there's a lot throughout society that does not show strong men sticking with their their women and their children and just, just look at how society is built. It's not built to show strong families together, especially strong black families. Strong black, black families, it's ridiculous seeing all of these these single black mothers. Mothers, it's a lot of them. And it's like, it's all, it's a lot of them nowadays. It's, they're like, the children are like purses. <laughs> to these single mothers in general in general yeah it's like purses so once the single mother well once a woman becomes a single mother she takes on a whole another role that's outside of her nature like she has to be a leader and a lot of them are not good leaders and me looking at my own family members who are single mothers they're terrible leaders and they don't know how to stand up and be dominant, which is not in, in a woman's nature to be dominant. So I understand that. So that's how children can just run amok over their mother because the mother is not dominant and she can't. And there's no strong male presence in the life of the, mo the, the mother, the female and the children. So. They just, the children just realized like, oh, okay, we can just run over mommy and do whatever we want. And that's how it is with a lot of, a lot of parents and, um, a lot of single mothers. And then you got some of them that take on more masculine characteristics that move more outside of their feminine nature and they become more masculine. And some of them even look more masculine once they take on that single motherhood. 
yeah, that single motherhood type mindset. And it is highly ridiculous. Like once you really see what's going on, it's like, oh man, I just put my head down and just shake my head, <laughs> shake my head and like, man, it's not funny. And I shouldn't laugh at it because there's a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of single mothers that they, they really, really are struggling and they're lost. So I don't want to laugh at it at, at all, but so I take that, that chuckle back because it's not funny because there's a lot of women that a lot of females that are lost, psychologically lost, and they have not found themselves at all. And that's why I'm happy that I listened to my spiritual guidance early on to avoid having children because I see the difference between having children and not having children <laughs> and for me I have about eight eight to ten nieces and nephews and I've been in all of their lives from the time that they were born and I've spent a lot of time with them and that's actual one-on-one -on -one time so I have a lot of experience more than a lot of people who are single without children but I have a lot of experience with children so i know what it's like to have a child and i'm fortunate that i can rtp my nieces and nephews and rtp meaning return to provider <laughs> that's what we used to call it in one of my old jobs when i used to be a medical claims processor we would look at i would uh, scan the applications for um medicare and then I will put RTP on it whenever they miss one or more things on the application and one or more things are messed up. You put RTP on it, send that shit back. <laughs> That's exactly how I, how I do with my nieces and nephews. When it's time to send them back, RTP them. Um, let me see what, what, what else. So they take on a more masculine role. And that is one major thing that world society influencers, how they want it. They designed it for that. That's why you see so many pre single mothers is pre prevalent now because they designed it so that they can break up the family. And when there is a strong family together, they're, they're much more difficult to control. But when you have one individual in the household who is, who isn't, psychologically equipped to be the strong leader they're much more easier to control and if you think about it look at all of the benefits that single mothers get from the world governments especially here in america versus when a woman is in a relationship with a man in in, in the man is in the house just really think about it think about welfare think about uh all of the um the government government benefits that women get and there's so many ways that they're encouraged to be single mothers versus um being a couple being a couple with a man it's it's built like if you really analyze this and really contemplate on it deeply it's built to design to keep women single mothers or just single single in general and just keep them from connecting with a man and that's that's another reason why this homosexual propaganda has been going on for many years this homosexual agenda just to keep the male and feminine energy from uniting with each other because there's a lot of power when you put the male with the female those two polarities together as one, there's a lot of energy that can be generated from that. And that's why they encouraging a lot of that homosexuality and also that single motherhood. And it's just a lot of subliminal messages throughout society that's encouraging people to, to go one or the other, whether it be be a single mother or whether it be encouraging a person to be just a homosexual. Just to keep them from that they're the, the natural way of things and that's the positive and the negative as far as physics the positive energy and the negative energy just like a battery you got a positive side and you got a negative side and um yeah so it's you're supposed to be unite both of them the positive and the negative together the male is the positive energy 
not not talking about being nice and, and being the good one, but it's just polarities. Just it's just polarities. Um, let me see what else. Oh yeah, and, and I really wanted to keep this short because I already wrote an article about single motherhood on my um on my my blog. I'm gonna put that in the description also. So I wanna remember that. Put that in the description. If I don't include that in, in the description, then just remind me to put it in there, and I'll um, send it to you too if ne- necessary. So it's about single motherhood, and it goes into more detail. And in which I feel like I, I went into more detail here than I wanted to, but I'm just in a talkative mood right now. It's like 11 o'clock, and I'm rela- rela- relaxed. <laughs> Uh, and I just feel like talking. Now, I might do a few more recordings right now while I have the energy. All right. So I'm going to close that out. You can email me your questions, comments, concerns, or whatever at committedrelationships at gmail.com. That will be in the, the description. You want to go ahead and make a donation due to you receiving a lot of in- beneficial information here and it benefited you in one way or another that'll be in the description also um you can check out my website that'll be in the description also everything will be in the description that i want you to see all right like comment and subscribe please till next time